Hey guys, we're back here for the uh, the new season. We just uh, just finished here. Um, I think I, I'm not sure that I made the top 1200 mythic, but um, regardless, it was a great season. Definitely had a lot of fun, and excited to start grinding again here. So <clears throat> I put together a update here to the Orzov life gain deck, and just wanted to like get some cards that really focused on some huge problem areas for this deck. Um, before I get into it, though, I just wanted to give a shout out to you guys. Um, just a couple minutes ago, as I'm recording this here on the last day of the month, I hit a thousand subscribers. So I'm super excited to cross that milestone and to have now um, broken a thousand subscribers. So thank you guys so much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Please continue sharing you know, my videos with your friends if you like them and if you think that they might benefit from them and they might enjoy them too. So thank you guys so much. <clears throat> if you're new here um, and you do like my video, please consider subscribing or maybe sharing it with a friend. And again, for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much. You mean the world to me. So getting back into the deck here, um, for Orzov Life Gain, one of the, the big problem areas that the deck has is that it runs into... Um, temporary lockdown and it's really rough because that basically eats the entire deck so <clears throat> one card here that really helps with that is um, get lost and so with get lost we're able to blow up the temporary lockdown get all of our stuff back deep cavern bat is another way where we can strip it out of their hand so with seven main deck ways to deal with it I feel a little bit better about um, dealing with that card the other thing which has been running around is the combo deck that uses um, the graveyard and reenact the crime. <clears throat> and so I wanted to enter uh, Lord Skitter, which not only is great, just, just against any kind of um, graveyard strategy, it's great against control, <clears throat> nabbing their pesky memory deluges, but also it creates an endless string of bodies, which is really, really good with Lunark Veteran and LS Core and Case of the Uneaten Feast to pump um, our Voice of the Blessed and Amalia Benavid Gears. So, really nice combo there. Um, Adeline is being introduced into the deck for the exact same reason. It creates creatures, which then gains life, etc. Um, two copies of Gix, because <clears throat> with all eight copies of these bats flying around, it just screams card advantage. So, small price to pay, a little bit of life to start drawing some cards, we're gaining a billion life anyways. Um, with the mana base, I believe we're running 22 lands, and that feels about right. Um, it's pretty low to the ground. There's only uh, seven three drops in the whole deck, so we have uh, three Shattered Sanctums. Uh, I put in three copies of Scoured Barons that just gives you a life on entry, which feels really good. Um, two copies of Restless Fortress to go long, and then we have uh, six pain lands between the Cave of Koilos and two copies of Thran Portal to get immediate um, utility. One copy of Myrix, just because there is a lot of double color and we want to be careful about having too many of these cards. Um, and then we have a Takanuma and a Niganjo, and then a couple basics to round it out. So all that being said, let's hop into some games and start grinding ladder. And also let me guys know, um, yeah, let me know if you want to see more like standard events, because those are a lot of fun for me too. So, you know, just let me know what you're thinking, if that's something that you guys want to see. I am also excited to say that um, <clears throat> tomorrow, I think, is the first day of the Arena Open. So if any of you guys are going to be trying out your best limited game, um, good luck to all of you. And I ho sincerely hope that you guys try it out, because it's... I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm going to try maybe one attempt myself. Um, I've got a little bit of a busy day, but try to make a little bit of room for that. So unfortunately, we got a mulligan this hand. Uh, this is a lot better. Um, here, I think I'm just going to stick with probably the two lander. We've got 22 lands. We have a decent chance to draw. And having access to these three spells feels pretty good. So I think maybe I will throw back... Um, yeah, I'll probably throw back the Cave of Koilos here. Actually, never mind. We want to throw back the Fortress because we need mana on two. So I think we throw back the Fortress. And then we can go like one, two with like Lurker into Voice of the Blast. 
Which is definitely one of the strongest sequences that, that this deck can do. It's like turn one, some way of gaining life, turn two, most of the blast. Really good against Boros, especially. Okay, there's another copy of Lord Skitter, hoping to hit our third land. But for the moment, happy to get Voice of the Blessed going. And we want to grow it before they can do um, Case of the Gateway Express. Yeah, they're... Okay, so they can take out our life gain, um, which is smart on their part. But at least they didn't kill our Voice of the Blessed. So, yeah, just kind of getting in here, and I don't really want to give them more fodder right now, but I guess we could if we have to. If they're at a spot where they look like they can go for um, Knight Errant this turn, maybe we can interrupt it with our Get Lost. But Get Lost is also good against, like, um, War Leader's Call, Case as well. And a Neem Pakal, apparently. Good lord. Yeah, no thank you. Alright, definitely really want to hit our third land would be super awesome. <laughs> we only have four more cards that cost three mana, so pretty much almost all of our draws should be live now. But yeah, we've got to get going, so in case they can go, like, uh, Knight Errant into, like, Imidane's Recruiter, yeah, like, here we go. This can get out of hand really quick. Yeah, and there they go. <laughs> There's the Imidane's Recruiter. Oh, Lord. All right, well, there's the third land. Is it going to be enough? Skitter doesn't do a whole lot for us. Um, I think we just want the Adeline here. Yeah, they're going to push for quite a bit of business here. <clears throat> if our own deck wasn't soft to temporary lockdown, I would honestly like want to have it here against them. So I assume that they're just going to be going like either like land guy into Imidane or just Imidane here. But they're pushing quite a bit of damage. Um, I guess maybe they're trying to slow roll it and just like do like a big setup for next turn. And like get like, I guess they could get Warden into the air. going to be a lot of damage coming in. <laughs> I 
Okay, so Voice of the Blessed, if we get that going, it is only a 3 3. Um, Skitter will at least make Adeline a little bigger. But if we attack with Adeline, they're just going to be blocking with Knight Errant. And yeah, so not a huge difference there. I think we just want Lord Skitter just because it's a little bit more mana efficient. Uh, but we're going to be taking a ton of damage here, unfortunately. I'm not sure if it's j if it's just lethal. Because, yeah, if they just go Imidane's, like, it's... If we have, like, at least three blockers, they're still pushing... Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven, fourteen. So And then they're gonna have the reinforcements also. So I think we might just be dead, unfortunately. In fact, if they have reinforcements also. So if we don't attack with anything here, we've got four blockers, so one, two three and then four for the Imidane. Then they're pushing two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So it'd be three functionally. Fifteen. I guess it'd be eighteen. So I guess we we could let the warden through. So I think it's safe to attack with exactly ruin like the mat. Although I guess like the voice isn't really any better at blocking just because these are going to be five fours, so it's not a huge difference. And if they have like a creature to go with it, then I think we are just dead. So they're just trying to like activate case, I guess. So I guess their big plan here is to activate Case and then probably set up Warden so it can block Flyers. Um, so we block here and here. <clears throat> and then do we just let Adeline go or do we take 10? Taking 10 feels pretty risky. I think we just trade in Adeline for a 5-4. So I guess now if they make Warden fly, we can get in with like more creatures, maybe. But we're at 17, so that doesn't really work. Okay, they were looking for another Imidane, didn't get it. 
But they do have K's. So we want to get our other voice of the blessed going. <clears throat> we'll get rid of their frontliner with Skitter. And then I think again, like we were we're not in a safe place to be attacking with more than, than Rune Lurker Bat. We'll have three blockers for these three, and then they're pushing two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, I think we just get in with Rune Lurker Bat only. Okay, so now they're either pushing or they're definitely getting their warden into the air, for sure. <clears throat> and they can even make it a 6-6. Six, six. I guess they can make it a 7-7. Seven, seven. This is super rough. Um, we kind of have to take it and hope for like a Hail Mary off the top because I think otherwise we're just dead. It's not really what I had in mind. Um, oof. Yeah, unfortunately, this warden is just locking us down here. And I think we got to hold the Ruin Lurker Bat to block it. So I think, unfortunately, we've got no good attacks here. They have two blockers. They would definitely block our two biggest guys. We'd only be pushing for six damage. Could drop them to four, but that's not quite enough. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that's going to do it. They just got a little bit too explosive too quickly. Okay, that's definitely going to be overkill. Assuming they actually attack. Because we only have five blockers and we're at 10. Yeah, we're totally dead. So it's definitely possible I might need a bit more of a nod to um, Boros Convoke because they do just go bigger than we do and they can just go wider, like way, way wider. But I think our deck is pretty well set up against like Mono Red Aggro. We do gain a ton of life. Um, got a little bit of a slow start that game, but in general, I kind of like where it's at. It's got a lot of different enablers. Um, yeah, this hand definitely is a little bit more stacked. It's a, it's a bit slow with these Sanctums, but I think it's good enough to keep.
Okay, so we'll save the Scoured Barons here. Um, we could potentially save it until we have Voice of the Blessed in play. Um, although I suppose if we draw out, we've got enough going on that maybe it's just better just to get this thing going. Just have good mana. Like if we draw like a normal mana next turn. Okay, so now we can just go with Fortress and set up with Case of the Uneaten Feast. They did Mulligan down to like five or six, so they're definitely a little bit, on, you know, not having quite as many cards. But this definitely goes pretty big against Mono Red. It's got some nice answers here. So I think this turn we just want to um, bat them. Let's start with a probably a veteran into a bat. <laughs> then we can do Voice of the Blessed next turn. Okay, so End the Festivities is pretty good. Wow. Yeah, that's going to do it. There have definitely been some times when I've uh, had bat in hand and had not actually um, cast bat on two and did something else. And it seems like it's always, <laughs> you always want to bat the, the, the moment that you can. So I've definitely learned a little bit, you know, some of those uh, play is kind of um, getting a bit more comfortable with the deck. Um, this hand looks great. And we can do um, turn one bat into turn two Amalia. We could also just set up here with Fortress, and I think that'd be okay too. But I think that, you know, the turn one bat into Amalia is actually pretty strong. We should probably go with it. Just get the jump on him. Since this deck does operate essentially on two mana for the most part, it's not that much of a, um, of a downside to play the fortress a little bit later. And we've got a nice reason to, to play it this way anyways. Plus Amalia can fix our land too. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I think, what are we up against? We're up against Sunken Citadel. Okay, we're up against the cave deck. Um, I guess we could probably maybe do a little better. We can try, try to go for like bat to get their hand. So we could probably toss that. Yeah, and then uh, land doesn't really do much. I think we can let that one go also. Actually, I suppose that land would have let us cast Voice of the Blessed. I forgot we don't have white mana. Um, so yeah, never mind. I, I should have kept that because then we could have cast the white mana on time. Oh well. We have Get Lost if we need it. And uh, yeah, I think Veteran feels pretty good. Um, again, I'm gonna try to see if I can find a bat so we can put this in the graveyard. And then we could have played out Veteran there, um, but I think I wanna hold, get lost. I don't really know what we're, entirely what we're up against here, so I wanna have access to it. Bat 
colony. Okay, I guess we can get rid of the bat colony. Let's see, so I guess we could trade our bat in for um, some more life. We also have another Amalia here, so if they kill the Amalia, I don't really care. So maybe we just send with Amalia here. I think I want to get like the trigger off of like multiple things with this bat if we're going to just lose it. So we're going to need to start just plowing forward with our Adeline and Amalia, since we can't really make a whole lot of use out of this bat right now. can set up here with phantom and then I guess um, we could like replay the Amalia if they decide to kill it so let's see do we want to have an extra point of power this will be a five power yeah I guess we do want this to be six power so I think we actually want this in play this way if they like triple block the Adeline we can still kill all their guys I suppose we could also suicide in our bat, and then when it dies, gain the life off the phantom. But I feel like there's a decent chance they just had like board wipe here pretty soon. Hopefully not this turn. And it looks like they've got the board wipe this turn, unfortunately. Let's just get rid of their tortoise. And now we can bat them. Yeah, let's get rid of that calamitous cave in. Um, search your cave card. 
Destroy target enchantment. They've got another tortoise. Just want to get rid of their cave in. We've got another cave in just ready to go. Whew, this is brutal. Ah, so what do we do here? I think we hold back on the Ellis core. Try to set up for the next wave. So I suppose we could try to like double block. Um, what do they have here? They have an instant turn the earth. Huh. Cave it as a sorcery. Yeah, I think we, we try to, I guess they get our land that way, which is kind of annoying. Um, Cause then they can just cave in afterwards, which is pretty bad. And cave in will do quite a bit of damage. So I think maybe we don't fall for it, we just take the damage. Yeah, this cave is going to do, oh yeah, just a metric ton of damage. Well, I suppose, yeah, we, we could have attacked there with Fortress. Actually, we should have probably attacked with Fortress. Just missed it there, unfortunately. Voice of the Blessed is good, but it's just... Um, we don't want to play too much into this cave in because they're going to get another one back when they kill the deep cavern bat too. Okay, so what are they going for now?
It can swing for 12, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, now we're kind of forced to walk into this cave in here a little bit. Um, yeah, they're putting us certainly in lethal range. So I guess we get Veteran out there because if they kill it, then we can just bring it back as a flyer. And they can turn all of these into three threes. Good lord. So they can activate one, two, all three of them for three threes. I think we just get in with the deep cavern bat alone. I suppose actually next turn if they activate all of them and just swing, they'll each be four fours because of tortoise. So we'll have three blockers yeah, no, I think we need to not attack with the Deep Cavern Bat, actually, unfortunately. And probably play Voice of the Blessed, playing right into their cavern. Uh, or right into the cave-in. Yeah, this is, uh, this is not good. <laughs> Oof. I think we can stave him off with this. The, the trick is to get them to use the cave in, but the problem is then they're gonna have another one here. Oh, it's it's so bad. Yeah, and that's pretty close to it, because now they can attack for 9 next turn. Even if they play nothing else. So even though we're walking into another cave and we kind of have to do this,
Yeah, the problem is, yeah, they just cave in again and then attack for nine. <laughs> I think if this deck can like dodge mass removal, it's in a really good spot. So maybe if I were to um, like update it, rebuild it a little bit, I think I would maybe um, like the get lost are great because they're kind of a catch all, but I think that like they might be better served as like duress since uh, that can still get like temporary lockdown. I can't get it after the fact, but it um, yeah it can help like get rid of it before they play it. Okay, so this deck did not have a stellar start. <laughs> Only 33% win rate, one and two. Um, but I do think it has promise, and I do think that you know maybe a couple shifting, a couple things around might be interesting. Um, again, what I might do is I might um, change like these get lost to like duress or something similar to that, um, just to be able to pick apart some of the board wipes that causes this deck fits. Um, anyways, yeah, definitely feel free to share your thoughts. Again, thank you guys for, um, for being here and for supporting, and we'll see you here for the next one.